Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about light XML, which is basically how to use transformers with dynamic negative sampling for extreme classification. So the main selling point of this paper is in terms of doing dynamic negative sampling. Right? So recall that the extreme classification problem is the multi-label classification problem where the number of labels, uh, unique number of labels can be in millions. Uh, so uh, light XML is one of the algorithms to solve this problem. Uh, let's get started and understand how light XML is trained. How does it architecture look like? Okay. So light XML architecture or light XML training consists of four main parts: label clustering, text representation, label recall, and label ranking. Okay. So uh, let's look at them one by one. So essentially, when you get input data, the input data basically contains a whole bunch of data points along with their labels. The uh, labels can be in millions. So an example problem is essentially matching an ad with uh, queries. So given a particular document uh, uh, or, or uh, you know, another example is, um, I mean, yeah, for ad matching, the problem is given a particular ad document. You want to find the queries or bid phrases that are relevant to the ad. Another example is essentially uh, you uh, have uh, uh, you know, a Wikipedia page title, and you want to figure out the categories that apply to this Wikipedia page title. Okay. So you have input data. Input data essentially comprises of, uh, um, uh, you know, training data, which comprises of training data points. So Wikipedia titles, and then which all categories are applicable to it. So categories can be in millions, and then some of those, a um, few tens of those categories may be applicable to an average Wikipedia page. Okay. So the first step in light XML is to do label clustering. Since the number of labels are too many, so as to reduce them to a controllable number of uh, uh, total uh, you know, clusters, uh, they do label clustering. So this label clustering essentially is very similar uh, to uh, the parable tree construction, so probabilistic label tree, but then they don't grow the tree all the way down to a very deep tree. Okay? In fact, they only do two layers of probabilistic label tree. So they take the uh, labels, the large set of labels, and then try to cluster them uh, two to three labels in that census. Okay. The clustering is actually done using balanced k-means, uh, hierarchical balanced k-means, where k is set to two uh, on sparse features. So for every label using the label text, you essentially represent it using a TF-IDF vector. Of course, this is a very sparse TF-IDF vector, and then you basically do clustering uh, on top of this uh, sparse TF-IDF vector representation. Uh, using balanced hierarchical k-means where k is set to 2. So that's basically your clusters. So you've gotten your clusters. Now the input text, whether it, you know, with the document text, so essentially uh, let's say if it is Wikipedia to category mapping, then the Wikipedia page title is essentially embedded using any of these typical uh, standard transformer-based encoder models like uh, BERT, Robert or X-Transformer. Uh, they basically use 12-layer base models with 768 dimensional embeddings. And now uh, they rather than uh, typically people use the CLS token representation of the last layer, but in their case, they actually uh, took the CLS token representation of the last five layers, concatenated them. So, you know, uh, one, two, three, four, and five, last five layers, they concatenated them and essentially used them as the representation for the document text. Okay. Um, now, there are these other two modules. So, one of them is called as label recalling, the other is called label ranking. So label recalling is more like shortlist generation, but rather than having a static shortlist, they basically have a, a dynamic shortlist. So the idea is that this label recalling model module and this label ranking module, both of them are trained together, and that is how their label recalling module is dynamic in nature. Okay. So so after all, label recalling module essentially uh, helps you generate uh, a limited number of positive and negative labels along with every data instance. Right? So recall again that in the XC problem that the number of labels are very large in millions. So if you do not do uh, a shortlisting of a few negative labels, but you want to actually train based on all the labels, that training is going to be super expensive. Uh, similarly, at prediction time, you can't basically evaluate the similarity between the input data point and each of the labels just to figure out which top care applicable. And therefore, you need a shortlister. So a label recalling module essentially samples positive and negative labels to help the ranker learn or also at prediction time to help the ranker just rank based on these top few shortlisted ones. Okay. So what you end up doing is to essentially take the embedding E, which has been generated in the previous step for the data point, you know, learn these matrices W and B and then apply a sigmoid. So essentially just apply a single dense layer. That's all, right? 
but then this dense layer, finally the uh, matrix W and the bias uh, values BG map it to the number of clusters. So if uh, the label clustering step gave you capital K number of clusters, then it maps to these K label clusters such that you can then choose in the recalling step uh, B label clusters, right? So essentially top scoring B label clusters. Now, of course, top. Uh, so all the all the data points, uh, all the labels which are in, included in these top B la label clusters are actually used. Um, uh, uh, you know, negative ones from them are actually used uh, to define this shortlist here. Okay. Um, so of course, while training, you also add the positive labels because you want to do backpropagation of uh, for the positive labels for sure. Okay. In a negative step, in, in prediction step, you essentially just use whatever B label clusters that you obtain. Um, uh, by looking at top few outputs uh, or top few scoring outputs uh, from G. Right? So now to be able to train this guy, essentially uh, you do, um, uh, you essentially uh, try to minimize the binary cross entropy loss with respect to label clusters. So uh, the setup is sort of simple to understand. Uh, you typically have labels uh, um, associated with plus one or minus one, depending on whether the label is relevant for the data point or not. Now you propagate those labels to label clusters, and then uh, uh, for every data point, you know which label cluster is relevant or not. Uh, now that information is essentially available in this ground truth, uh, uh, ground truth labeling of these label clusters uh, as YGI, right? So for a particular uh, uh, cluster, uh, there are K different clusters for a particular cluster, um, uh, you know that cluster may or may not be relevant to a particular data point. So essentially, uh, if it is relevant, uh, uh, you know YGI is equal to one. If it is not relevant, YGI equal to zero. Now, of course, you also use the uh, G of uh, E scores for that particular label um, as uh, calculated using uh, uh, using uh, you know uh, this uh, uh, dense layer, and uh, then you compute the overall loss using this formula. So essentially, the idea is to uh, is to have uh, high G of E values for relevant label clusters and low G of E values for not relevant label clusters. Okay. Um, now, um, this this uh, these uh, uh, matrices W G and B G are going to be trained along with the label ranker, which basically means that you do this negative sampling or sampling from G of E at every epoch, right? And uh, that is why it is basically called as dynamic negative label sampling. Okay. Now, what happens in the label ranking layer? So, or rather, you know, this is how label recalling is being done. You have label clusters, uh, you score layer, uh, uh, label cluster scores layer, and then you get top K, and then you have label sets, and uh, you get label embeddings. Uh, so now the idea is that you have label sets. So you figured out that there are going to be B label clusters from that you have basically figured out labels. And for each of those labels, you now come up with some label embeddings, which you are going to use to, so as to, so as to basically do appropriate label ranking. Now, in their method for the label embeddings, they do not really learn those embeddings from the uh, from the label text at all. Uh, what they do is to basically uh, have free vectors or uh, these uh, parameters associated uh, with every label. So, for every label, uh, you essentially have a, a vector in this embedding matrix E, which is essentially trained along with the label ranker training. Okay, so that basically gives you your matrix M, the overall matrix, which basically contains an embedding for every label. Now this uh, hidden bottleneck layer, hidden bottleneck layer essentially is exactly this. So essentially, uh, so sorry, the hidden bottleneck layer uh, just this uh, is is just a dense layer. So what it does is to essentially uh, take the embedding E that you have learned here and uh, uh, essentially takes that as input, applies a dense layer on top of it, applies a dense layer on top of it, and multiplies it with uh, uh, the embedding matrix for the labels. Okay. So thereby, I mean, you know, when you multiply this, you essentially get a similarity value D, right? So in some ways, M multiplied by uh, this entire thing gives you the similarity between the label embeddings and the document text embeddings. And then uh, essentially, again, uh, the loss that you try to minimize so as to learn these WH and BH is, uh, uh, is some sort of binary cross entropy loss, uh, basically trying to say that, hey, if the label is really relevant, then your DEM value should be high. If the label is not relevant, then your DEM value should be low. Okay, uh, and uh, again, YDI are the actual labels. So for a particular document D, uh, or for a particular document, uh, right, and a particular uh, uh, label, you want to ensure uh, that you get very high uh, values if the label is relevant to the document. Okay, 
Now, as you notice uh, uh, here, they use G for generator, which is basically label recalling step, and they use D for discriminator, which is basically label ranking step. Okay. And the overall loss is then written as LG plus LD because the two are optimized together. So you want to ensure uh, that uh, the label recall and label ranker are both learned together. Okay. So that's that. So compared to other methods like attention XML, uh, light XML is actually pretty light because it just trains one single model uh, end to end, right? End to end. Um, so how does it perform? Well, first let's talk about the prediction. The prediction pipeline is also pretty simple. So label, uh, so when, when you get a document, you essentially encode it using your uh, text representation. You do a lookup on the label. Uh, so essentially you just do a dense layer and that's your la label recall step. So it uh, figures out the top P clusters and then you have another dense layer and that's your label ranking step, which basically scores each label in this subset. Um, the final scores are actually a multiplication of these two scores, uh, the scores coming from the label recall step and from the label ranking step. Uh, just like other algorithms like uh, attention XML, uh, they also use an ensemble of three different models. Okay. So how does it perform? So well, they experimented with uh, several different data sets across different matrix position at one, three and five and across uh, and, and they compared with multiple baseline methods like DSMEG, Parabell, uh, XML, CNN, attention XML and so on. And they find that light XML actually gives you better results compared to uh, any of these methods on most of the data sets. Right? Uh, rather than using an ensemble of three different uh, models, they also tried with just uh, a single model and they observed that using a single model also gives you better results compared to using a single model of attention XML. Recall that attention XML, attention XML learns an LSTM per level of the parable tree and therefore it is sort of expensive as well. But the nice point is that light XML is not just light in terms of uh, let's say model size and train time and so on, but also uh, in general leads to uh, uh, more accurate results compared to attention XML, at least on these two data sets. Okay. Finally, uh, you know, if you compare from uh, uh, an efficiency perspective, uh, here is a comparison of light XML with attention XML on these two data sets in terms of their training time, prediction time and model size. So what you observe is that on both the data sets, the training time in terms of training hours is much lower for light XML. Um, at least for Wiki 500K, I mean, it's sort of comparable uh, on Amazon 670K. From a prediction time perspective also, I mean, you see that light XML actually has lower prediction times, uh, milliseconds per sample. Uh, this is in milliseconds per sample, right? So that's that. And if you look at model size, well, in uh, in case of Amazon 670K, the model size is about 72% lesser compared to attention XML, okay? So that's that. So uh, in summary, in this video, I talked about light XML, which involves uh, four different steps. First is label clustering using hierarchical k-means with k equal to two. So uh, then the second step is essentially coming up with uh, text representations for document text using transformers. The third step is label recall, uh, which basically involves dynamic negative sampling of clusters uh, using just single dense layer. And then the fourth step is essentially label ranking using uh, binary cross entropy like loss. Uh, and uh, um, again, it basically also involves a single dense layer. The interesting part is that the label recall and label rankers are learned together. Are learned together. Right? If you want to play around with the code, the code is available there. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.